Hello Art 10. We're going to work on uh, some basic watercolor techniques today. So if we are getting started in our class we usually use what we call um, pan watercolors. So they are already preloaded in a palette shaped box and uh, all you need to do is add a little bit of water to their surface to what we call wake them up. Um, watercolors are also available in tubes and when they come in tubes, you have to make your own palette. And here's a little glimpse at my personal palette. Um, you can fill them up as much or as little as you like with whatever colors you want. And um, they're usually a clamshell. They kind of fold like that. The next supplies you're going to need are the brushes. And ideally, you're going to have at least a round brush. Um, I love to work with a couple of different sizes, as well as a flat brush, a square sort of edge, um, really thin. And this is called a bright. So it's also flat, but it's, it's cut at an angle, which can help you kind of carve into some different spaces and, and create some uh, finer details with your painting. The paper we'll be working on today comes from your Canson Mixed Media Sketchbook. I've uh, pre-cut some swatches so that I can work with them taped down to these little matte boards. Now, if you're working directly in your sketchbook, you can try a couple of things. Um, if you're working on a page, you might choose to find some sort of a clamp or a clip and um, keep a few pages together to keep them flat. You can also take a piece of tape and anchor this page from the side kind of all the way around your book and that'll keep it flat. Um, it usually isn't such a big deal when we're working with swatches, but when you get to the point where you want to be making your painting, um, I would suggest working with the last page in your book and then using the backboard as a bit of a, a brace. So with tape, and paper-based tape is best. I don't have any masking tape at home. I only have what's called washi tape. So that's what I'm working with right now. Um, you're gonna wanna wear it off on your sleeve and, and just make sure you de-stick the tape. And then um, try to create an even border. You can wrap those edges around and um, this should be enough to keep your painting flat while you're working. Now, if you don't believe me, let me show you quick what it'll look like if, uh, if you don't do this. You'll end up with um, your paper warping and curving and, and just generally becoming a really sort of frustrating time. So I've got a loose piece of paper here. On my palette, I've already woken up the yellow with a little bit of water, so I'm just going to keep working with that to show you what happens. And it's mixed media paper, so it has a nice tooth to it. It's a little bit thicker than, than computer paper and sketch paper for sure. But nevertheless, once you add water to it, it hydrates and it expands. The fibers swell and press apart from each other, and it's going to pop up and curve just like that. And what you can see happening at the edge is our bead of paint is going somewhere where we don't want it to go. So this will continue to curl and get kind of really crazy actually. Look at that. Um, so not ideal. You don't want to be painting on, on loose papers or you'll just be incredibly frustrated. So the flat wash will be our first technique that we discuss, and it's the most basic of the, the painting techniques. You can really complete an entire painting with, with layering and just flat washing your color on. So let's discuss first how to hold our paintbrush. Now it has the bristles, the metal part is called the ferrule, and then the handle, usually wood or plastic. You're not going to grip it like you would a pencil for writing. Um, you're going to want to have a looser grasp kind of with your fingertips so that you can actually work your whole wrist when you're when you're painting. So aim for grabbing kind of in the center where that bulkiest part is and uh, the next step is to wake up your paint. For the flat wash I'm going to use a little bit of water on my brush and work in the paint, to, uh, work in the water to the surface of the paint. 
Now this will hydrate the paint and allow you to get your brush all charged up. Now you can see that the the paint is on the tips of the bristles. It doesn't crush all the way into the, the neck or the metal ferrule part, and that's that's good. We want to keep the paint where, where it'll move um, at the tip of the brush. So for the flat wash, we're gonna let the water do the work, and we're not going to try um, to scrub it in or to really do a lot of brush marks. It's gonna be a nice, gentle, side-to-side -side motion. I'm holding the the board at a bit of an incline and at an angle that's comfortable for my hand so it might look a little sideways for you. Um, I'm going to start at the top of the area you want to add the color to and then you're going to take that bead and just carry it all the way down. Looks like there's a little bit of lint got caught in there. Oh well. So at the part where you lift off, you might leave a little bit of paint. Um, that'll happen. And you can kind of just tap that down with your brush and then use gravity to let the paint back flow a little bit. And settle back down. Now I'm gonna try and find something to get that lint out of there with. I could wait until it dries, but you can see how it's pooling darker around the lint. We don't want that to happen. So it's just a little little piece of hair. Now we were able to pull that out while it was still wet enough that with the, the gravity and the flow of the water and the paint, we can let that do the work. I'm gonna set that off to the side to do the last bit of drying. And we're gonna move on to something called the gradient wash. So it's very similar to our flat wash, only it's going to involve um, water this time. So I have the luxury of two water cups. Uh, you can see one is my swampy water where I'm rinsing out my paint, and, and one is clean water. If you have um, the luxury of two cups, this is a great method to keep your paint colors pure and not muddy, and as well as um, clear whites with the, with the clean water. Um, if you don't have the option of using two paint uh, water cups, then use one, but make sure you change it often. You don't want the swamp water to linger for too long or it'll start to corrupt your, your palette and your painting. So the gradient wash refers to um, creating an area that goes from dark color to lighter color. So we're going to work with green again, and I'm using less water to start with, so you can see Oh, excuse me, puppy. I'm busy here. Give me that. Give me that. Go. Hopefully she doesn't fetch. So we're going to work with the, the paint just to have the brush charged up, but it's not too juicy. It's all the paint that we're going to need. So you start with that flat wash going back and forth, and then really quickly, we're going to take our water, we're going to rinse off our brush just a little bit. So there's still paint on our brush, but there's also a lot more water. So pick up where you left off and continue to work down. And then we're going to rinse off our brush even more. Almost all the paint is going to be gone now. Carry down, down, down. And now I'm going to rinse it completely clean. So scrubbing it out in my, my messy water and then giving it a quick rinse in my clear water. So now there's only clear water on my brush and I'm gonna pull into the bottom there and ease that all the way down. Now it's a little bit too much water pooled there. So what I can do is dry my brush off on a Kleenex and then go back in with a thirsty brush and it's gonna absorb all that extra water. You can see it just sucked it right up. And we're going to go back in and get that last little dollop. And make it even towards the bottom. Okay, so there's at least a dark, a middle, and a light. You can rinse your brush as many times as you want to create as many steps in your gradient and as many values, darks to lights, as you like. Um, but that's one way to just achieve that general 
fade. So this could work really well in landscapes for skies, or um, if you if you reverse it, it could be the ground where the foreground is really bright and you can see it with a lot of clarity and detail, and then it gets fuzzier uh, as you go towards the horizon line. Moving on, wet in wet is a really useful technique for creating um, beautiful blooms of paint color and, and soft edges. So up until now, we have been working with wet paint on dry paper, wet on dry. Wet in wet refers to having um, your surface, your ground, the paper, already with a coat of water on it. Now, I've also only been using one brush up until now, but if you have the luxury of two, uh, the flat brush really comes in handy here. Using my clean water bucket, I'm gonna uh, charge up my, my flat brush with just a lot of water, and then work that over the surface of the paper. I also um, did a flat wash of yellow down here before, just to kind of show you guys what layering might start to look like with some of these techniques. So, Using my round brush, I'm going to wake up the green again and touch it to the edge and you can see the paint start to bloom out. So depending on how concentrated you apply the paint, you'll get different effects. Depending on how much water is on your surface will also impact how far that paint will flow. And the water really does do the work here. We don't want to muck with it too much. So once you have your paint applied, you have to be patient. You have to wait, let it dry, let it let it finish, let it flow. Um, if you wanted to coax it a little bit, you you can, and and that's control. That's called control. Uh, so you can control the paint. I don't really like what's happening with this line over here. So with a dry, thirsty flat brush, I'm going to go in and I'm going to just pick up some of that connection that's happening and I'm going to keep those two areas separate so that I have this bloom by itself and then the bloom along the top. You can notice down here there wasn't actually any any water so we end up with what's called a hard edge and I'm going to show you um, about how to how to control that in uh, our next little panel. So for edges when you're painting shapes in your painting, it's really important that you decide uh, in advance whether you want a hard edge or a soft edge. And it's gonna depend upon um, a couple of things. What it is you're painting. Does it have a hard edge in reality or does it not really have an edge? So this is an example of something I've painted before and it's now completely dry. You can see that with this stripe of blue, there is, um, two sides to it. So there is the, the sharp, really clear, um, hard edge. And that was done with wet paint against dry paper. And then on this side, I painted up against some wet paper. So the paint bloomed and, and flowed and threaded out into that wet surface. So we're gonna use our flat brush again. Clean, clean water. And on the soft edge side, I'm going to actually wet that surface. So you can see a little bit of that light reflecting that there's a, a bead of water, wet surface. And charge my brush up with the green paint. And I'm going to overlap. So my brush is touching half on the dry paper, half on the wet paper. all the way down. So you can see some areas that were wetter have more flow and some areas that were starting to dry right where my paintbrush first started to touch down uh, didn't flow as much. So you can go in and control that with your brush. You can do some gentle scrubbing and I'm not touching it very much. I'm just kind of wiping the paint into the water area blotting it on my brush as I go along because I don't want to introduce too much water. I just want to kind of coax and encourage the paint to flow 
where the water already is. Okay, so that's going to create for you a hard edge and a soft edge. I realize it's a little difficult to see with the, the light reflection, so don't worry. At the end of the video, we'll revisit all these techniques and what they look like dry versus what they look like wet. Okay, so that was wet paint on dry paper wet paint on wet paper. Now let's um, do something that's called dry brush. And so it's a little bit of a misnomer. The brush isn't actually dry. It just has very, very little water in it. So um, you're going to use your tissue to kind of pull the water out of the base of the bristles. We don't want to lose the paint because that's what we're working with. So you're just pressuring um, your, your, the base of your paintbrush into your tissue to dry it off as best you can. Now we're going to go back into our palette and our green paint is still woken up but it doesn't have a ton of water in it which makes it great for this technique. So you're going to charge your brush up again and you can see as the brush is charging and moving um, the bristles don't look as nice as they did when we had the water. They're kind of starting to to separate almost and um, they just look a little haggard, which is what we need for this technique. In fact, if you pinch closer at your brush, you can kind of separate them a little bit gently. You don't want to you don't want to murder your brush, uh, but this will create a bit of a spread. And now with the dry Where's my camera? Dry paint uh, on dry paper, you can get some wispy little lines. And so, on top of, say, a flat yellow wash, this can really start to look almost like a farm field. Because even though we're, we're practicing these techniques in isolation as swatches, but we we'll use them in our paintings all in combination with each other, built up layer upon layer upon layer. So that's why on some of these cards that we're going to continue with, you'll see I've already done a, a wash of flat yellow. So you can see how, how the paints and the textures and the techniques interact with one another versus just bare on the white of the paper. Yeah, if you um, are fortunate enough to have what's called a fan brush, um, that's a really great tool to give you uh, lots of texture. And they look a little something like this. So you notice that when I when I took my brush and spread the bristles, they almost fan out like that. So a fan is a fan brush is the right brush to use for for lots of dry brush texture. But um, like I said, you only need one brush, and if you if you know how to control it and change it, you can you can create all the all the textures that you need. Okay, those brushes aside, let's revisit our gradient. So it's starting to dry. It's a little tacky up top, but. Um, that's not a problem. We're going to work with Scrafito right now. So Scrafito uh, is essentially denting or scratching. And I'm going to write that down for you. Dent or scratch. Now you can do these dents and these scratches on the dry paper. And I like to use the back of the paintbrush, as long as it's not one that, say, has a colored enamel on it. The white paint's fine, the plastic brushes are great. Um, if I was to use one of these brushes that has colored paint, you might see that it'll, it, it may smear on you. This one is still in pretty good shape, but uh, it's not always the case. So just be careful with what tool you choose. Uh, a paper clip or even your fingernail is going to be okay to dent the paper. So you can, you can dent and scratch before you apply paint, or you can do it once the wet paint is onto the paper, and the paper becomes a little bit softer. So we'll compare and we'll see what those um, different orders of operation look like. So I'm just gonna do a pretty fast, basic flat wash over our area.
and you'll notice that our paint settles into the dented grooves. Oh, I don't like that zigzag that's happening there. How can I control that and get that out of there? There we go. Okay, so um, you can see those are the dents with my fingernail. It was a finer tool and it was much sharper. Now, if I make some dents, I can scratch the paint away. I can also kind of bruise the paper for the paint to settle in the crevices, be a little darker. So this is something that you can work through for, for different clothing textures or landscape textures. Tissue texture is one that um, is going to require a piece of, I would recommend facial tissue, but you can experiment. You can try with um, paper towel or toilet paper or whatever you've got. Um, a couple of things are going to impact this technique. One is the way we use the paper. So if you blot with a completely flat surface, you're going to get a big flat shape sucked up out of your paint. If you crumple the surface, and you see there's lots of folds in our tissue, um, and you blot the surface with that, then you're going to see those creaks and crevices reflected in what's picked up from your paint. And it's going to depend on the subject you are painting, what approach you are going to make. Perhaps you just want um, clouds, and clouds tend to be a little bit softer, so we're going to want to use the flat surface. Here comes a cat. You are not welcome here. You are not welcome here. Go on. So a flat wash with our tissue. And if we use the flat area, we're going to pick up a big flat spot. If we use the crumpled area, we're going to pick up little crumpled shapes. And then this is another one where you just have to have patience. Just let it dry. If you wanted to and you were trying to create clouds, I know it's a green sky, so that's a little bit weird. Um, but if you wanted to control the shape a bit, you could go in with that drier, thirsty brush and maybe make the clouds extend a little bit to the side. Pull out some more of that paint. Give some little shadow peaks on the inside. And there, that might end up looking a little bit more like a cloud. So this one um, is a texture that uses a piece of um, plastic cling wrap. So I've just got it backed up on a piece of paper so it doesn't static cling and crinkle to itself. But just like you would wrap up your leftovers, your food, um, you're going to cut yourself a small square off the roll and um, working with wet, wet paint. While it's still actively wet, you take your plastic wrap and you put it down onto the surface of your painting. You can see as it suctions down, it's creating little creaks and crevices. And so if you wanted to, you can manipulate those with your fingertips or with a paintbrush and make more or less. So the paint gathers in the grooves and against where, where the plastic is making contact with the paper and it um, kind of sucks away from some of the peaks of, of the crimps in the plastic wrap. So 
it um, it's a wicking effect like straws and air pressure and so when um, you get it while it's really really wet it's going to stay still like this and then you have to wait again waiting watercolor means waiting so we're gonna put this to the side keeping it really kind of level because I don't want it to tilt too much and uh, let's move on to something called wax resist so if you have um, a candle at home and now I had this giant candle and it's not exactly uh, white wax but it is clear it's it's got a very little bit of color in it so I'm going to use it like a big giant crayon um, and draw some lines across the surface just with the wax okay they're hard to see because essentially this wax is colorless um, but sometimes at that angle there with the light you can see and you can feel them with your finger more commonly, if you have at home some crayons, you can also create some lines on top of your dry paper. No cat, you are not welcome here. Not right now. Different colors will have different effects and right now I've just drawn a pattern um, but you might want to use this to your advantage uh, if it's a landscape and you could actually find a bit of a brown crayon and and draw some some brown branches or some yellow or some orange and then um, what you'll see is that wherever the wax contacts the ground the surface the paper uh, it's not going to let the paint touch that area so it, it essentially resists the paint and preserves whatever's underneath. So here you can see the wax. And that candle actually did pretty good. Um, what I am going to do is clean off my brush, first in my swamp water, then a quick rinse in my clean water, and I'm going to dry it on a tissue and I want to kind of suck up some of those um, errant paint bubbles. You see they're sitting on the surface. Uh, I don't want those. I want that surface to be clean. So a little bit of detail. And what, what's happened there is the, the wax didn't make a perfect seal. So there were little pieces of paper sticking through that the paint was allowed to cling to. But I don't really want them to be so obvious. So while they're still wet, I'm just going to run my thirsty brush along some of those lines and kind of try to clean the, the bulk of them up. Okay, we're going to move on to the salt texture, which is sharing this little card stack. And for this, you're going to need just a little bit of table salt. Um, you can use regular, regular fine grain or pickling salt, the coarser stuff. Um, they're going to give you different effects so again right now we're just getting used to our paints and, and learning about the techniques so it's a great idea for you to try and um, experiment with whatever you've got for this one again nice juicy charged up brush and you got to work quickly like with that plastic wrap so I'm gonna put my flat wash down over top of my surface and then I'm going to take my salt and sprinkle it on then we wait let it dry you can start to see that there's some light bright blooms happening around the grains of salt they're interacting with our paint and kind of absorbing some of that water which will concentrate the pigment in those areas and um, we're going to get a cool frosty little effect i hope we'll see how it works out um, lots of variables here with these techniques you have different paper you have different paint you have different hands you use different amounts of water um, I have a hard time recreating them but generally speaking uh, they have their purposes and when used in combination uh, much like your your pencil marks and your your stippling or your sharpie techniques you can uh, create a more nuanced and detailed piece of art by incorporating some of these techniques
So I believe we have one more left. We've already talked about it a little bit, um, and it's just using tape as a resist. So this allows you to have a little bit more control over what's happening. And you can use a piece of tape like that, or you can get really kind of finicky and you can cut for yourself specific shapes. I'm going with triangles because they are easy and fast, um, but you could cut circles, you could cut special, special shapes for, for the subject with which you're painting. Lots, lots of choices. Okay, so we'll go like that. And remember, you want to wear off some of that sticky. You don't want it to take up too much of your paper or you risk the fibers in your paper ripping off when you remove the tape. And that's heartbreaking, especially if you've spent hours and hours on a painting. So just a flat wash over these guys. I'm going to chase that backwards, make it a little bit more even. It's almost like a gradient. I'm okay with that. Whoops. Wet and wet on that side was still kind of a bit of a puddle. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Let it dry. And I'm going to do some video magic. Cut you guys off. Once all these samples are dry, I'll take them off their cards and uh, we'll see what we ended up with. Okay, so it's been a few hours and uh, everything should be dry, so let's revisit our swatches. We started with the flat wash, which was all about how to make um, as even an area of colour as possible. Ah, so quick example of how the tape can pull off a little bit of paper if it's too sticky, but it was just on the edge of this one, so not too big of a deal. This is our tissue texture. Here we have a gradient. And um, the Yarka paint palette that I was using is what's called a semi-moist watercolor. So the paint has a little bit of a sticky binder in it. And in, in some brands, this is a synthetic material. In some, it's like actual honey. Um, what that means is it, it stays a little bit glossy and a little bit tacky when it's in higher concentrations. So you can see it's glossy still, but it's actually completely dry. Our Scraffito. Denting or scratching into the paint. And we had dry brush. You can see a little bit of shine on the paint here as well. Now our plastic wrap texture should be dry. I haven't taken this uh, saran wrap off yet. But you can see as I do that, the paint, now that it's totally dry, stays exactly in place. Oh, it actually looks like there's one juicy little spot there in the middle that's still wet, but it's not too broad, so I don't expect it'll, it'll flow. Uh, the problem with taking off the saran wrap too early is if the paint hasn't dried yet in its ridges, it'll diffuse and spread and, and you won't end up with those, those nice, crisp fracture lines like we've got here. And then we've got our wax resist and our salt texture. And our salt texture was a little disappointing. I, I wish it had done uh, a little bit more. Uh, to really see what it's like, you need to um, gently rub off all the salt particles. And these ones are really entrenched in there. So. I suspect that this paper is not quite up to par for the salt technique. Um, ideally, we would see a lot more little crystal blooms and a lot less salt solidified to the paper. So, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, as you will. Whatever it's going to be in your painting, great. Uh, if you don't like it, don't use it. OK, 
Okay, so um, I'll take some pictures of those and uh, we'll post them at the end of this video. And um, I will also do a little time lapse of a canola field. I'm just going to do a quick little painting of the, the landscape there using some of these techniques and some of these colors. And you can kind of see what it means um, to really layer with your, with your painting and with your techniques. As I was getting ready to do the canola painting, I found one more uh, that we hadn't yet talked about, and that's the tape resist. So let's peel off our, our tape here. Just grab it by a little edge, and then you can see how nice and crisp those barriers and those lines can be. So we'll be, we'll be using this technique um, in our landscape to help us preserve the horizon line of the sky and keep the blue out of our yellow. Yeah. So there we go. Dried, wet, and wet, and tape resist.